Carlos Castro. Stunned by the turn of events, but Brandon Figueroa amped up the pressure and ends up stopping Carlos Castro. You know my problem with Brandon Figueroa is? Is that we've seen this song and dance before with Omar Figueroa, who's going to be fighting Adrian Broner. It was just announced. He's going to be fighting Adrian Broner um, August the 20th on Showtime. Brendan Figueroa fights like a younger version of his brother, Omar Figueroa. You can tell that they're, you know, even their sons, if they have sons or if they're going to have sons, they're going to be fighters. They're just fighters. Nothing too flashy. Straight come forward, pressure fighter, power punchers. Uh, Brenda Figueroa just stopped uh, Carlos Castro. I don't even remember what round that was. And um, he's now competing at 126 pounds since losing. Here he is right here. Since losing to Stephen Fulton back last November. Majority decision. Me personally, I think that he did enough. Here we are. Um, let's look at the punch stats first. 485 or 149. Um, 149 landed of 485 for Figueroa, 150 of 383 landed by uh, Castro. Only 17 of 25 were jabs. That's the Figueroas. You know, let me turn it up some. Yeah, the fight around. No. Well, let's go back and we'll... Don't want to turn that up, but James Brown will definitely get you copyrighted. So... They were talking about at the final press conference. Ooh, right there on the neck. And then he came across with a um, with a hook. I got to be careful because sometimes Showtime can, you know, CBS can be a little crazy. Let me see here. He turned him. And then this one, he got the stoppage. And this was the second time he had gotten trouble on the ropes. He was in trouble on the ropes earlier in the fight. And the referee had just seen enough. So they were talking about earlier in the week that Brandon Figueroa, now that he's won, he's going to get the winner of the main event coming up next, Mark Maxeo, Ray Vargas. That's going to be interesting, even though, you know, I really wanted to see the Stephen Fulton rematch. I was saying that I had him beating Stephen Fulton because he just outpunched, outworked Stephen Fulton. But in a rematch, if Stephen Fulton takes him seriously, I think he could win. But it would have to take place at 126 pounds because Brandon Figueroa is now done with 122, where um, Stephen Fulton is now the WBC and WBO champion. And does he have the ring too? Did he, you know, did he get in the ring? I know Marajan Akhmadaliyev hurt his hand in several places. So he's going to be out for a while. And that fucks up undisputed at 122 pounds. But let's listen to the particulars. Let me turn it up. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. The winner of the WBC featherweight world title eliminator, Brandon, the heartbreaker. Here you go. This was an eliminator. Let's listen to the post-fight interview with Jim Gray. Hey, help me out. Take your time out. Like the video if you haven't. That really helps us out. Sorry, guys. Maybe I jumped out. I apologize. All right. Thank you very much, Morrow. Uh, the referee, Mark Nelson, just told me that there were unanswered punches, and they caught him on the rotary. After two, he said that was enough, and he said that uh, Carlos did not complain. He said okay. Brandon, congratulations on this uh, very tough assignment tonight, wasn't it? Oh, yes. You know, Carlos Castro is a great fighter. Shout out to him and his camp. Uh, you know, big thank you to my team, my dad, my family, my mom, my sister, my big brother, all Heyman, PBC, TGB, Showtime, everybody that made this possible. San Antonio, thank you. Uh, 956, big shout out to you guys. And I'm just happy, honored to be here. Did you feel as though you were winning the fight until the final knockdown? Yes, sir. You know, I know Carlos Castro is a crafty fighter. I had to be just a little bit patient. And I knew just how to uh, put the pressure, you know. Uh, after a little barrage of punches, I got a little tired, so I had to step back a little bit. And, you know, I knew that, that he was hurt and I had him, so I just had to put a little bit more pressure. All right, Brandon, let's take a look at the monitor right here and tell us from your vantage point what was going on in the third round with the first knockdown. Yeah, you know, I, I, I caught him clean. I caught him with, with a good looping left hook. And I had him, you know, just put, putting those punches together, and I dropped him. 
How do you think he? How do you think he managed to withstand the barrage at the end of that third round? Man, I don't know. You know, Carlos Castro he has a lot of heart. Uh, he he's been proven in in a ring, and I knew it was going to be hard to get him out of here. All right, let's now look at the end of the fight and tell us about how you were able to turn him and get this fight to be stopped. You know, I heard him. I was just waiting for that shot to the body, and once I caught him clean, I knew he was hurt. And I just flipped them and, you know, put my punches together again. As we take a look at it, and there you see the referee stepping in right here shortly. There goes Mark Nelson, and he stops the fight. How proud of you are yourself that you bounce back from that defeat against Fulton? You know, pretty proud of myself, but I know there's a big, uh, a lot of work ahead of me, especially if I'm going to fight the winner of the main event. So uh, there's a lot of work ahead of me. I'm going to look back at this fight, study it, and get back, to, get back in the gym. Who do you like in the main event? You know, uh, both are great fighters, but I got to go for the Mexican, Re Vargas. Brandon, congratulations. Look forward to your next fight. Yes, sir. Thank you. Moro, back to you. All right, Jim, thank you very much. I, well, they just said it. You know, he's going to be fighting the winner of the uh, main event. And let me see how the main event goes, because I'm picking Ray Vargas before I go ahead and see if the winner um, um, can beat Brandon Figueroa. Because Brandon Figueroa, you know, one thing he focuses on is outworking you, you know, and trying to knock you out. You know, but if you can't, you know, slow him down, you know, I don't know. By the way, he was up on uh, two scorecards, 48-46, and then the other one, 49 um uh 45 it was a six round stoppage here is the rankings at 126 pounds it's kind of all over the place mark maxeo fighting tonight against uh, ray vargas from a 122 pound champion leo santa cruz and lee wood they're going to have to fight or you know somebody's going to have to give up that belt because they got to unify those titles that wba super and wba world josh warrington we really have no clue what he's doing next but he is a uh match room the zone fighter and you got Emmanuel Navarrete, who's fighting in a couple of weeks, I believe. Um, I put the uh, boxing schedule down below in the description box. Let me check real quick. He's fighting on August the 20th, excuse me, the same day as Adrian Broner versus Omar Figueroa um, against Eduardo uh, uh, Biaz or Baez. I always mess this up. Whether it start with a P or a B, I always mess it up, even though I'm Hispanic and I should know better. Or at least I identify as Hispanic. Um, and you can do that as 2022. Uh, so, yeah, you know. It is what it is. It's a division that when I'm looking at, it's like, okay, they got to sort out the WBA uh, situation before they can even have a sniff at even becoming a unified champion in the division. But let me get ready for the main event. Uh, thank you for watching. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. I am T-Street Controversy with 5U360.